Have you ever stopped to think about the fascinating dynamics of modern road grime? You could spend years analyzing the different types and combinations of soil, air pollutants, precipitation, insects, and thousands of other things that can get stuck on a vehicle surface. As a professional car wash operator, you have only one concern, how to get everything off in three to five minutes or less with no damage and at a profit margin that makes sense to do so. Hi, I'm Anthony Annaletta with Sunnies. Today we're going to discuss the fundamentals of the hybrid car wash equipment layout. Be forewarned, there are many passionate opinions related to this topic, like deeply guarded and revered family recipes. So let me stand behind the following disclaimer. This is only how I do it. Also, I am only going to review it with generic equipment types and their basic properties, not manufacturer specific technologies or improvements. If I can't think of at least two manufacturers that make a similar product, then I won't include it in this video. Let's get started. I think high pressure on its own, high pressure water systems like a, a small rollover aren't that good, but with friction and high pressure, the hybrid situation is great. I mean, because you get, you get the friction and then you get the high pressure. So the friction will work it in, soften it up, like if you've got bugs on the windshield or, or some bird poop, you know, it'll soften it up and then the high pressure will finish it off and strip it off. Uh, but you can't, you know, you need high pressure for wheel cleaning. I mean, if you, unless you, I mean, even if you don't have an Omni or a wheel blasters, you're going to have to do it with prep gun. Well, you know, people could say, well, I don't want to put in an Omni, I'll just do it by hand. Well, let me tell you, you know, you got two employees and you have to do every wheel by hand when you versus one employee and having the equipment in, uh, and that equipment shows up every day. You know, it's in that tunnel. Uh, so the wheel blasters are a must. You can't build a car wash without wheel blasters. It's almost impossible to begin selecting car wash equipment without knowing how many cars you need to process during the busiest hour of the busiest day. The equation is simple. How many cars pass by your location, that's your car count, multiplied by the percentage of cars that you hope or wish to wash, that's your capture rate. In reality, the capture rate can be a tricky number to accurately predict. Average capture rates published by the International Car Wash Association are a good place to start. But how you run your, and market your business will dramatically impact the actual number. Regardless, the site style combined with pricing, marketing, customer service, visibility, your skills and operator will contribute strongly to the actual capture rate and your required equipment package. There is not a specific car wash package ideally suited for full service, flex service, or the express exterior model. Equipment selection is all about how fast, how clean, how safe, and how much labor, if any, is involved. Brushless, touch-free, soft cloth, touchless, there are enough terms floating around to thoroughly confuse customers and operators alike. To produce the highest quality wash that is quick and economical, I recommend using a hybrid combination of both technologies in every conveyorized wash. This leverages the ability of high pressure to clean within wheels and other grooves while friction materials clean flat surfaces with less detergent, water, and electrical expense. In the same vein for mixing technologies for a better wash, I equally recommend varying the types of friction wash materials within the same wash. The goal is to produce the cleanest, shiniest, and driest car safely, reliably, and economically with absolutely no manual prepping. Yeah, it's important, I believe, for the operator to stay up with the changing technology within our industry. Uh, in the case of our newest car wash, we have uh, four different materials at work in there. Everything from the, uh, the microfiber, mitter cloth, we have Neoglide working in there. We even actually have nylon bristle working in there on the lower detail portions of the vehicle. And then we have some cloth still working in there. Uh, these, uh, these particular materials are designed to work better in certain areas of the vehicle. Uh, they're more effective, they're safer. And uh, by, by being aware of that and using them in a proper fashion, uh, we're able to, uh, to put out a good clean car safely. Let's go take a look at the hybrid wash process, step by step from, from start to finish, both in the tunnel and we'll go in the back room and follow the support equipment that feeds all that equipment in the tunnel. 
Upon entering the wash, the first thing to touch the car is a wet foamed alkaline detergent. The combination of arches and floor mounted applicators required will vary depending on conveyor speed. Simultaneously, wheels and tires will receive an application of non-acidic cleaner. This too should be a wet foam detergent applied via two floor mounted CTA applicators per side, spaced 40 inches apart. Next, a second application of a foamed low pH lubricating soap is applied immediately before the first friction wash component. This is commonly a mitter or wraparound washer, and often the foaming applicator is attached to the entrance of the wash unit. Lubrication of the wash material is vital. If your low pH detergent does not include a lubricant, then you must apply one separately. In a hybrid car wash system, there's three reasons to use foam. Number one, we want to, we want to ensure that we got complete coverage of the vehicle surface with the detergent we want to clean the car. And the foam will allow us to do that. If we don't see foam touching every area of the car, we know we didn't get it on there, good chances we may not get it clean. Number two, we use it to lubricate. Or when using wraparound brushes and mitters and you want a safe, gentle wash process, you need to lubricate that cloth material to make it go around the car real friendly and be able to be active and work on the vehicle surface. Number three, it helps to drag the dirt off the, off the car. The weight of the foam helps not only just to, to cover it and make it active, as it runs down the side of the car, wet and runny, it actually pulls dirt down off the painted surface and that will enhance the cleaning process. Come on now, we'll take a look at a couple of different ways we can make foam and how we can apply it on the car. First one here is on our K-nozzle foaming applicator. We've got a K-nozzle which creates a flat fan, big wide, 110 degrees. The, chemi the chemistry in the air is forced through a foam generator and then that pressure along with the right dilution of detergent will make this real active and come out and hit the car at a couple different angles. By pivoting the nozzles or pivoting the manifold, you can get it to hit front bumper, end side or top and back. And you can have manifolds mounted on side legs and on tops of arches. The second one is with the shower head. Down here we have a shower head CTA. The shower head comes out in a zero degree style foam. This is a real tight pattern, different on the CTA than you would for a triple foam to control where you're applying the chemistry so you don't waste any. Again, we have a foam generator and we have air and chemistry mixed at the point of entry. And this is a great way to foam on not only triple foam, but CTAs and regular soaps and, and, show, and lubricating soaps for emitters. In a well-planned hybrid car wash, there's really no need for a prep gun at the loading area. This location here is at the end of construction. They're just trying to finally put it together and there is no prep gun outside. There's a couple of quick disconnects in the tunnel on the outside of the building for cleaning and maintenance but not out here for the use of the, of the employees loading the car wash. We are in an area where there's a, a couple of tough issues when it comes to cleaning cars. Seasonally there'll be bugs and the bugs are really hard to clean and the normal process is either an employee standing out front with a high pressure gun or a couple of employees with bug sponges trying to get those bugs off. In this area here, instead we've got a bug arch. This is an automatic applicator using a loop detector and an arch with a series of nozzles and a high pressure pump that will actually apply the bug cleaner to the vehicle as it moves on the conveyor. It will give it about 10 feet of dwell time before it hits the other detergents and then with the right mix of friction wash equipment and high pressure in the tunnel, the bugs will be 95% gone without any manual labor whatsoever, which in this application is very acceptable and will work great for this wash process. There are certain exceptions in certain rural areas where you've got clay, ro muddy roads, dirt roads, um, you just can't get away from it not being able to knock that mud off before the car goes through. I feel sorry for those customers, but they're out there and you have to have prepping for those locations. But in this process here, it's detergents first, friction second, then high pressure after we've had the dwell time and the time to loosen up all that dirt and bugs and then we can clean it off real easy. Many people don't realize, but when you just take a high pressure gun with water and you try to spray off and remove bugs, dirt or mud, it actually hurts the wash process. You're actually cooling the car down to a point where the chemistry may be less active. You're also wetting the car so you, when the chemistry finally hits the car, you've diluted that wash process. It's better off to just let the chemistry do its job. When we wash a car by hand, we mix up some warm soapy water, we take it with a mitt, we put it on nice and gentle, agitate it, and then we rinse it off with a hose. And the wash process set up properly, we're doing the same thing. The best way to wash it is to do the high pressure in the middle of the tunnel.